Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BJ Tech News, and I finally took out the Prodigy Z930 uh, laptop from Toshiba, which is an Ultrabook, to set it up for one of my users that they are going to pick it up on Friday, and I needed to get it up and running. Now, the way that I get my machines up and running is I use my WDS, which is my Windows Deployment Service, uh, and also my MDT server because I have a custom Windows 7 image. We're not fully pushing out Windows 8 yet and I don't really want to give this user Windows 8 so I found that this particular laptop was giving me so much problems with the I believe the UF or the UEFI so I'm gonna restart it and I'm gonna show you guys what I saw so by default what I normally do is a lot of laptops come by default to boot from the LAN right uh, this particular laptop, I find it kind of interesting because it had two options to boot through the LAN. Now, uh, and I'm assuming the reason it has two boot options, I probably you guys can't hardly see. Let me see if I could zoom in a little bit. See, it has LAN 1, LAN 2. We're not really doing IPv6, we're doing IP, uh, IPv4. So when I hit enter, it looks like it's going through, right? Again, I do apologize for the video quality, but it's pretty horrible. And I'm trying to zoom in and show you guys what I see. Now, it says boot failure. You know, a proper digital signature was not found. One of the files on the selected boot device was rejected by a secure boot failure. So I'm like, what? So the first thing I did was uh, I basically restarted the machine again. And I held down the power button. All right. And, and I started again and I did an F12 okay and I went into my bio settings I went inside the bio settings now the secure boot option is actually enabled and that's why you're getting that error so you need to get into it and disable it now for some reason there's a problem with uh, downgrading your Windows 8 to Windows 7 so you need to go to advanced system configuration and as you can see your boot mode is uh, UEFI boot you want to basically change it to CMS boot when you do that your SATA controller will change to a AHCI uh, I'm going to do a F10 to save it and I'm going to press the F12 command now if I didn't do these settings within BIOS, my MDT server will not contact this particular laptop. Now, look what happens when I go inside the boot menu. I don't have LAM1 or LAM2 to boot to the IPv6 or IPv4. I have the regular LAN. So I'm going to hit enter in that. And if everything goes well, it should start talking to my WDS. And I could do an F12 to pixie boot into my, you know, my W, my... Uh, my WDS server as well as my NDT and I'm going to do a 64 bit and it's loading up hopefully you guys uh, find this useful because it took me a while to figure this stuff out uh, if you have any questions or concerns hey leave them at the comment section and I catch you guys later peace out